Okay, I'm Diamond, aka the OG Ho. Y'all know me, and I do my Build a Bitch workshops. This is my Build a Bitch mini workshop mini, where I teach you guys uh, something that I took from our workshops, and I just make a mini version of the most important lesson that day. And this was week seven, I think. Oh my eye! It was either week six or seven. Um, I'll put it in the description when I post the video. But we went over how to spot a manipulator. We also did online safety, so you should go check out the actual video. But how to spot a manipulator. That's something that people really need to know because as an ex-predator, I preyed on the weak. I preyed on men that were sad and, um, you know, down on an insecure and women that were insecure and just depressed. And I preyed on them. I'm a manipulator, I was. Um, I'm an ex, you know, I'm recovered, I guess. And now as a predator, I'm here to teach you guys not to be prey. And the first thing to be, to do, um, if your prey is learn how to spot us. So very, 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 very first thing. I wrote an entire book, Advice from an OG Ho, and in there, there's a section on survival. You might need this. It has a whole bunch of different stuff on manipulation or really just how to get out of situations and what what happens if you get into one little tiny things like tidbits and you know how you it's not your fault things like that um, because it's not your fault however unfortunately we don't live in an ideal world we live in the real world and in the real world even though it's not your fault things still happen to you so you have to be prepared so the biggest thing with a manipulator is that you are not supposed to know that they're manipulating that's the whole point of manipulating, right? So they're going to do everything in their power to make them seem like the good guy and make you feel bad. First thing we do as manipulators, we gaslight. Uh, typically, and I've, I've, I've also been prey as well. I've had people, you know, manipulate me and prey on me. I was beaten and assaulted many, 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 many times. Literally in my book, 27 years of assault from child to older. So, um, hey bro, um, I got my PB, my pit bull over here. But anyway, uh, so yeah, 27 years of assault. So obviously I know my shit. And one of the biggest, most easiest things for a manipulator to get away with is gaslighting. Gaslighting is, gaslighting. It's really making you go crazy, pretty much. That sounds stupid, right? Making you feel like your feelings and your thoughts are not real or invalid. For example, I, we are in an argument, right? And, and three days later, you go, you tell me like, remember when you said that? No, I didn't say that. What are you talking about? I would never say, a lot of times we wait like longer than a week. What are you talking about? I never said that. Or sometimes we'll flip it and put thoughts in your head. Do you remember when you said that about me and it hurt? You didn't do that. You never did that. But we, and we know that, but we're lying to you. We're gaslighting you. Or if your feelings are, um, you know, because let's, let's be honest, facts are not feelings. Facts don't care about feelings. But the fact is, is that your feelings are going to be hurt. So if your feelings are hurt, you tell us and we go, no, I bet, no, you didn't feel that bad. Or no, it doesn't hurt that bad. Or I, you, you don't know what you're feeling. Like we, we literally, we literally try to make you feel crazy. A lot of times, I would go back like to the same men years later and they would be like, you know, you made me feel like I was the bad guy. That's what gaslighting is. We're trying to make you feel like you're the bad guy and we're the good guy. So you to spot that, you have to be on your shit. And it really sucks to have to be on your toes all the time, but you have to be a very intelligent person. You have to be perceptive. You cannot just go in blind. Like, uh, so uh, you have to remember like, let's say, I don't know, that argument, and I said something that you didn't say. No, I never said that. And stick to your guns. Don't let us bully you down because we'll bully you. And eventually, because manipulators are weak people, they'll back off and be like, damn, this one's a little bit harder. Which means they'll normally leap, uh, uh, go uh, up a next step. We'll take it up a notch. There we go. To selective honesty. Selective honesty. And that is it's really just lying. But a lot of times it's not lying. So I'm telling you a story. I want you to feel bad for me. I want you to love me. I want you to feel for me. That way you give me stuff. 
right? I'm going to tell you, and I want to get close to you. I want to know more about you. It's really to know more about you. I want to know like the ins and outs of your relationships, or I want to know what makes you tick or something. So we'll be in bed or something and I'll go, you know, uh, I'm just not used to good guys like you. And I'm sure that, um, you know, you're used to having women tell you how great you are. We know that because we can sense the insecurity in you. But, you know, I've been abused by so many men. I have been abused by men. I'm not going to tell you that I was also part of the problem in some of those relationships. But no, I'm not going to tell you that I cheated and lied multiple times. No. Does that mean I deserve the abuse? No. But I'm not going to tell you uh, a, lot, a, a lot of my other shit, a lot of the other things I've done. I'm going to tell you what they did to me. So, and you're going to go, no, you know, actually, I really haven't ever been appreciated. Boom, now I'm in. Oh, really? Well, what were your past relationships like? Boom, then you tell me everything. So I selectively choose things that I know that are sad and they make you feel things, uh, feel things for me. But I know a lot of times they'll relate to you. Sometimes we'll read you. So we'll see, let's say you got a pink shirt on or you've got some, um, I don't know, Jordans on. Oh my God, my mom used to have those Jordans. My mom ain't never had Jordans a day in her life. My mama would not. Um, uh, but she wore tennis shoes. <laughs> so... It's kind of lying, but it's really just, I call it selective honesty because we select things based on you that we think would apply to your life that way we can create a bond with you. It's not a real bond. It's fake. I'm lying. I'm trying to manipulate you. And if that doesn't work, um, and the only way to get uh, over that is just go, oh, wow, really? Remember the shit we say. Then later on down the line, ask us, like, hey, blah, blah, blah. Oh, what are you talking about? Selective honesty. You got us caught in a lie. Um, and even still, you know, if it's not a lie, don't give up too much information with somebody you don't know. So if I tell you about the abuse I've suffered over day, I'm not really sad. And that's why a lot of times when I talk about the abuse I've suffered, I'm not coming, I'm not telling you guys like, oh, woe is me. I'm not doing that. Because I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm just telling you the facts. And the fact is, I get my ass whooped. Um, but if, not, if those two don't work, then we'll go to number three, passive aggressive. Passive, get it, I never could spit. Passive aggro, passive aggressiveness. Passive aggressiveness to me is like that covert shit. Um, you're fat, right? And you know you're fat. And I'm trying to bully you. Oh, are you sure, are you, sure you wanna eat that? Oh, well, I, of course, it looks a little tight on you. Or, oh, you just, I, I know it's a, it's, oh, you, you wanna lose weight or something, but, you know, you don't, you don't have to do that. You look great the way you are. We're lying to you and you know that. That's actually not passive aggressive. That's just lying. Um, it's also, if I'm upset about something, um, oh my God, if I'm upset about something and I'm really, really mad, well, no, it's fine. Well, no, it's okay. No, I don't care. No, I really don't care. But you know I'm mad. You know I'm upset and we'll sit there and just be passive aggressive. No, I don't want to. No, and a lot of times passive aggressive, I never was really good at passive aggressiveness because I'm not passive aggressive. So I was aggressive aggressive. If I want something, if I have a problem with you, if you irritate me, you're going to know because I'm going to scream it to the heavens. So I'm not the best at passive aggressiveness, but you guys know passive aggressive. People, you and they're annoying, you do something wrong, and they're just like, oh, well, I mean, yeah, it kind of upset, but no, it's fine. You know, and then, but then they treat you like shit. And, well, remember when you did that? It didn't hurt my feelings. Bitch, you could have just said that. That's passive aggressiveness. You want something, but you're too much of a pussy to say that you want it or you're mad about it. So then you just, I don't know, you're, you pussy out and whine about it all day. It's fucking whining. That's what passive aggressiveness is, whining. The only way, the way I defeat passive aggressive people, deadpan, uh, what are you talking about? Well, yeah, it's really hurt. I don't care. What are you talking about? Why are you being dumb? Be aggressive aggressive with passive, passive aggressive people. Because they'll sit there and lie and cry and... Uh, or sit there and be weak and stupid. Be aggressive with them. You will bully them down. Sometimes you have to be aggressive. If, the, if uh, those three don't work, then we'll move to number four, which is love bombing. This is what I was really good at. So love bombing. I mean, I'm still the queen of this and I don't even need to do it. Love bombing is, you know, okay, new relationship, cool. I'm going to buy you everything. I'm going to give you 
gifts. I'm going to give you kisses. I'm going to snuggle. I'm going to spend the time, uh, the night at your house. I'm going to get to know your dogs. I'm going to get to know my dogs. I'm going to go running every day. And I'm just loving you. I'm going to tell you how great you are, how awesome you are. You're the most fabulous person in the world. Oh, then I disappear. I bond you with love and then I disappear. And then a week later, you're going to be like, what the fuck? What's going on? And then a week later, I'm going to come back and be like, oh my God, you know, I'm sorry. I was busy. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. And then I disappear again. So it's going to be a lot of highs and then lows and then highs and then lows. And your brain gets addicted to the highs and the lows. So now you're sitting there like, did I do something? Did I do something wrong? Let me do anything I can to make her happy. Let me do whatever I can to make her happy. If she wants something, I'm good for it. If she's mad at me, I'll just let her. If she's hitting me, if he's hitting me, I'll just, I'll just let him so he won't be mad so I can get that love. That's love bombing. I was the queen king of that. Um, now, I, I was never physically abusive, but mentally and emotionally, I most certainly was. And um, that's horrible too. But if those four don't work, then we'll move to number five, financial dominance. I never is still. Okay? It's literally what it sounds like. We use our money to dominate you. So I make six to seven figures in any given year, right? And I know you're broke. So I'll let you move in with me. This actually happened to me with my own money, believe it or not, it's a long story. Um, but I'll let you move in with me. Of course, I got you, I'm gonna take care of you. You don't have to work anymore, I got it. You don't have to go to school, I got it. I'm ready to support you. That's why I tell all you young women, especially who are out there looking for a rich man, stop just looking for a rich man. He might be ready to whoop your ass. Are you ready for that? Probably not. You're looking for a rich man, you're not looking for a fist in your face. But you may get one because he's just financially dominating you. He wants to be controlling. The biggest thing about manipulators is we want to control the entire situation and you. That way we can manipulate the entire thing and into, into our favor. Okay? So I'm going to spend a lot of money on you and then I'm going to eventually cut you off from um, anything that gives you freedom monetarily. Uh, and then if that one doesn't work, then normally we go to, and or we've done all of these, then normally we go to belittling and insulting you. Belittling and insulting. Most people know what that is. It means I'm going to belittle you. Um, I'm going to insult you. I'm going to uh, do this in front of your friends. I'm going to do this in front of your family. I'm going to make you feel like you're teeny tiny. I'm this big scary monster and there's nothing you can do to fight me. So I'm going to belittle you. And that's why I don't need physical violence. I can do this. I don't need to physically assault you because I could do all of these things and that will break you down worse than a fist ever could. So in order to combat belittling and insulting, do not allow them to talk to you like that. Create a boundary and stand true to that boundary. If somebody tells you you're stupid, no, I'm not stupid. Um, you know, why are you being sensitive? I'm not stupid. Because then they're going to make, a lot of times they'll mix it, they'll be belittling and insulting, then you'll be passive aggressive about it. What are you talking about? I'm just playing, like, come on, why are you getting, nah, uh, no, I'm not stupid. You don't talk to me that way, you can get the fuck. For financial dominance, because I forgot to go over how to get out of this one, um, keep your money. Your money is your money, his money is his money. That's it. You keep your money. Men, that's your money. Do not allow anybody to take your fucking money. Um, love bombing to fight that one by the way allow them to do it but keep an open keep a keep a close eye keep an open mind if they pull away suddenly don't care I ignore it you have to love yourself enough to not care that they pulled away because we prey on people that we see as weak that we can tell you're walking around like this you're overweight you're under tall you're sad you got a frowny face all your on. You're dressed in all black. You, uh, you, your cup. You're shuffling around. I can see that. I can see that. I come up to you. Wow. You know you are so handsome. You'll be like, maybe. Come on, bro. You know you're not. And even if you are, you know nobody's told you that because, or you don't feel that way. And you know that some. You can smell the manipulation. You know that. Something deep inside of you goes, this person's not real. This person's not right. Be careful. Go with your gut feeling. Um, 
Okay, so those are just the those are just like the big things that we do to spot a manipulator. The biggest thing you need to do to know how to um, spot a manipulator or uh, how to fight a manipulator is just love yourself. You've got to love yourself enough to where if a manipulator tries to leave you or do any of these things, you won't stand for it. That's how to spot a manipulator. Very simple, right? Okay, so I also wanted to go over um, some domestic violence tips slash, or how to not get into the situation anyway, slash some dating red flags. So this is just kind of a little bit of a, of a bunch of things today, just on domestic violence and stuff. So domestic violence 101. This is for women and men, obviously, and any gender, whatever. You could be a fucking turtle. If you somebody whooping your ass, you need to know this. The first thing you need to do, if somebody is abusing you, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, whatever, is document everything. Document everything. It is 2023. Homeless people have a cell phone that records. Anybody has a fucking cell phone. Take out that cell phone and record. Hide a camera somewhere, hit record. Have that document, hide the documentation, by the way, but have that documentation somewhere. Give it to a trusted friend. Give it to the police if you can. Eventually, you're going to be going to the police. But document everything, every text message, every phone call, every uh, abuse, every bruise, every time they do something nice for you too, and then when they do something um, evil to you because you want to be able to show a pattern of love bombing or uh, financial dominance, uh, passive aggressiveness. You want to be able to show that pattern. So document, write it down, date it, email it to yourself, a separate email account that he doesn't have or she doesn't have access to. Okay? The second thing you need to do, this is only if you are in a position to fight back, fight back. Defend yourself up until the point where it becomes assault. Don't assault them because then you could get in trouble. Remember, know your state laws. But what you really need to do is call the police. So document everything and call police. For men, there's a tip in my book. It says men too. Advice from OG Ho. Men too. It happens to men too. Just because you're a man and a woman is abusing you does not mean that you don't go to the police. You need to go to the police. It does not make you weak to go to the police. It does not make you a bitch to go to the police. You need to go to the police. You need to sue that hoe. You need to get press charges on her and get your money. Now, for men, you guys are really going to have to document everything because a lot of the police don't believe you. A lot of people, they will sit there and they'll make fun of you because it was a woman that was doing it. That's fucked up. But you've got to just keep pushing. And it's hard to do that, so you do want to try your best to have a good support group. But sometimes they isolate you. That's literally what manipulators and abusers do. They isolate you. We want you alone. So, um, you know, we have to, in order to control you, so you have to be very, very strong in yourself. And I remember when it was my turn to get out, get out of an abusive relationship, I, it was me and it was this fucking 18-year-old girl that was literally the only one that I was able to lean on and her family and I didn't I barely knew these people but I was I had it's when I didn't have the strength she had it for me which was great I owe her uh forever because they really they they took my shit in trash bags and ran away um but fellas women everyone fight if he's about to kill you if she's about to kill you she's pulling a knife on you dude it doesn't matter that you six six she's five feet tall whoop her ass Beat the shit out of her. Win that fight. Now, don't get in trouble for abuse or assault, I mean. Don't get in trouble for assault. Just come at you with a knife. Defend yourself up until, you know, the police come. Sit on her if you have to. Slam her head through the fucking floor. Do whatever you have to do to keep yourself alive. Because that bitch will kill you. There's a guy on TikTok that got shot by his wife or girlfriend. And I think the baby, too, or he was holding the baby. Some crazy shit. And... Everybody just laughed at that. That's not funny. I feel like he should have beat her ass. But of course, a lot of you guys are good people. And that's why we do it. Because you are good people and we know that. So we know that you're not going to hurt us. Hurt her. If you're being abused, and it's especially if it's life-threatening, she pulls a gun on you or a knife, win that fight. 
document everything, pull that phone out, put it somewhere, and commence to beating that ass. And don't fucking, but make sure you call the police first, because you're not getting me in trouble. Uh-uh. Nope. Uh, number three, or I put it here, but I'm gonna put it here again, call the police. The police should be called before anything. When I say fight, I mean literally defend yourself. Like, if, if, now if you can just sit on her, that's fine. If you can just sit on her, do that. But um, if you can't, defend yourself. But then call the police again. Bug the police, annoy the police, press charges, document everything, get a lawyer. Win, win, win. You have to think of her as your opponent now. Think of that bitch as your fucking opponent. Think of that guy as your opponent. You are in this to win. It's you or him. This is Wolong, Elden Ring. It's you or Radagon. Like, what the fuck? You're going to keep getting your ass whooped? No, you got to eventually learn to fight. That's your opponent. 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 Win. Press charges. Call police. Fight back. Document everything. Come on. This is, this is life or death. He's going to kill you. I don't know if you guys know Elden Ring, but if you do... That gun beats the shit out of you over and over and over again. And then the big fish kills you. This is not the point of the video, though. Now, the last thing that you might have to do, this is if you are not in a position to fight. You might have to manipulate your way to safety. Tell that person how great they are. Tell them that you're so sorry. You know, make sure you're documenting everything, but tell them how great they are. Tell them how sorry you are. Tell them, you know, give them the best fucking sex that you ever could give them ever. Tell them how much you love them, blah, 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 blah. Manipulate your, manipulate your way to safety. So manipulate, 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 buy them things, rub their feet, whatever, whatever. It doesn't have to be, your heart doesn't have to be in it, but you're trying to survive. And if you are not in a position to fight, which most of us women are not, then we have to manipulate our way to safety. And if you can think, if you can get their guard down long enough for you to escape or win, then do that. So that's, that's, it sucks, but this is the, nobody ever speaks about domestic violence in a real way. Like you're getting your ass beat daily. You're getting raped daily. You're getting assaulted and punched in the throat, choked up against the wall. That's terrifying. You have, you are now in survival mode. People in survival mode, they have got to survive. That's the point of survival mode. How do you do that? You win. And people need to talk about that in a real fucking way. You do anything you can to win. And if you are not strong enough or big enough to fight, women, we manipulate until we can get the fuck out. Do what you have to do to survive. Do whatever you have to do to survive. But do that. And always remember, please go to the police. I know a lot of people are scared of the police, but I would rather the police shoot me in my ass then that man take me back to his house. Trust that. Okay. And the last thing with domestic violence, the best way to avoid domestic violence is to not get in it in the first place. Now, like I said, is it your fault? Hell no, you're a victim. But we live in a real world, not an ideal world. So shit happens to good people, which means you have to figure out a way to not be prey and not be preyed on by predators, which means following your gut following your gut when you come across a person now anybody can be an abuser obviously there's no look to them but a lot of times there is a feel to them there's a gut feeling that you have it's your survival instinct kicking in like no no, no about this one i don't know about this one i remember after i was in an abusive situation uh i played this game ghost of tsushima and um there was this character in a ryuzo and instantly i knew he wasn't shit why because i had been through that but you don't want to have to go through that to learn it because everybody has that gut feeling. Even if you've never been through it, you can just get out of that. Sorry, my dog. Uh, you, you can just feel it. So, and you too, get out of that. What's wrong with your butts? Um, go with that gut. There's a million other men in the world. This guy is not going to be the one and the only one for you ever, ever, ever. There's 52,000 exactly like him. Probably at least 500 that look exactly like him. Like, he is not your one. So if your gut is telling him you maybe, and you're going, well, I've been so lonely. Maybe this is the one. No. Listen to your gut. You will find another one. Remember, you have to love yourself enough for none of this to happen to you. You will find the one. I promise you. I promise you. Okay? And follow your gut in regards to red flag. So... This is the third part of the video. Okay, red flags. So dating red flags. 
And this is for both genders, all genders. So I'm going to be speaking in terms of male and female, but remember you can use them interchangeably. One of the biggest uh, red flags is uh, their, their attitude in public. Attitude. If they are loud and boisterous and crazy, not in a funny way, but in a look at me, look at me way, that's a danger signal. That's a, I need, like Rizzo said, I need my men to respect me. I need this for my men. When he was talking about getting the rice and the food for his men. I need this for my men. Okay, because they need to be seen. They need the external validation. So, attitude in public. If you're with a girl and she's just a hot ass mess, just a just rude, nasty attitude, not a sweet person hollering and screaming, that's bad. Those are abusers. Because why are you doing all of that in public? You don't have to be meek and silent, but just be calm. Most confident, calm, good people aren't broadcasting it. Actually, 99% of them are not broadcasting it. Why? Because we're confident. I don't need you to know that I'm confident because I'm confident. But for weak-minded people, they, de they need that uh, external validation. So they go crazy with um, attitude. Their attitudes are crazy in public. That's the biggest, biggest red flag to me. Other than like the actual fist in face. You know, that's the biggest red flag is your attitude. It doesn't matter what you look like. I mean, it does. When we'll get to that. But it, all of that can be negated if you have a good, calm attitude. It's in feel. Go with your gut. The next thing, since uh, speaking of a, uh, what you look like, is their attire. Okay? It depends on the venue. If I'm going to the gym, cool. If I'm going to the grocery store, yeah, okay. If I'm going to a dinner, no. And there's a certain way to dress for certain situations. Why is your ass out? Why are your boxers showing? Why is all, all of this everywhere? It's because, are you showing everything? It's because they need that external validation. So a lot of times those people are manipulators and abusers because they need external validation from people because they don't feel good about themselves. And people that don't feel good about themselves hurt other people. It's hurt people who hurt people. Confident people don't hurt people. I don't need to. But back when I was weak, fat, and sad, hell yeah, I needed to. Speaking of fat, the way they treat their bodies. The way they eat. The way they bathe. The way they uh, take care of the things that are on their bodies. The way they take care of their hair. Now, a lot of times this can be depression or anxiety, which is why we're using, these are just red flags. Some people can have one red flag and be still a great person. But in, in, if they have all of these things, then that's, that's a bigger flag, you know? So the way they treat their bodies, if I'm shoving junk food in my face, I'm unmotivated to get up and go exercise. I'm, uh, I don't wash my hair, I don't wash my clothes. A lot of times that's because I don't feel good about myself. And people that don't feel good about themselves hurt other people because they need to bring other people down. So the way that someone treats their body, you can see that they don't love themselves, stay away from that person. Because even if they're not abusers, they will bring you down. Hurt people hurt people. Put it on your forehead. The next one, um, this is for mostly women, but actually no, it's for, it's for either. Uh, how do you spell this? Relationship with older men in their lives. So no, I'm not talking about sugar daddies. I'm talking about a father, an older cousin, a mentor, a uh, coaches. The relationship that they have with older men in their lives will show you how they know to treat or what to expect from another man. So if they treat their dads or their their older cousins or like shit, they talk down about them, they hate them. A lot of times they will do the same to you. If they've seen their fathers abuse their mothers, a lot of times they'll do the same to you. If you have good male role models in your life, 
then you don't have to seek out um or you know what a good male role model and good masculine energy feels like you know what a good strong masculine energy is so you not you're not going to go and bring any toxic energy because you already you're not looking for the good energy if that sounds kind of crazy but if you have it then you're not going to need it if you need something you're in survival mode if you're in survival mode a lot of times you're toxic because you're trying to survive so that's where that comes from but if they have good relationships it doesn't have to be great but decent with some male role model in their life just one even older friends just good relationships with men a lot of times that means they're a good person because also older men are not going to let their younger brothers beat the shit beat out beat on their women they will not allow that older men are not going to allow their younger sisters to be treated bad and not only that to treat men bad they're not going to allow that that's not going to happen so older men a good strong man brings order and stability a good strong man you have to find one of those they are there not everybody grew up with a toxic um father not everybody grew up with toxic toxic men around them and the people that don't the people that do have those good men they exude that so you really want to look for people that are have good men in their lives um also interview a way to find a red flag is interview their mothers. Okay? Chances are, whatever that mother thinks, she taught to her daughters and her sons. So, lady, if you want to take your take your boyfriend's mom on a date, see, or your mom and her and your boyfriend on a date, or her mom, his mom and your boyfriend on a date uh see how she treats him see what she thinks oh baby he doesn't have to get up and do anything he will never stand up a day in his life for he will never lift a finger for nothing oh no that's my baby that's my baby he will never ever 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 do anything for himself in your household he will bitch and scream and cry because she coddles him and babies him likewise sirs if that woman, I don't, she don't need no man. She don't need you, blah, blah, blah. I, don't, I taught my daughters to be strong. They don't need a man. Chances are that's a toxic woman. And she has taught that, talk, spread that toxicity to her daughters. So interview the mom. Uh, the mom is where the baby comes from. A lot of times you can get a good role, male role model in your life that isn't your father. But it's very hard to get a good uh, female role model that isn't your mother. Maybe an aunt. But it's really hard to find someone that doesn't have a good mom, uh, that doesn't have a good mom that is still a good woman. A lot of times we have to go through some bullshit, then we become that. But there's a string of hurt men left behind us, like Arbad. Um, okay, another one is how they speak. Slash their vocabulary. Now, I can say this is somebody that doesn't have a very good vocabulary. It's not always this. And people with great vocabularies a lot of time are pieces of shit people. But remember, all of this in combination, this will be a problem. This will just be another red flag. They just speak with a lot of cuss words. I remember oh, there was this North African girl, she or Ethiopian, I think. And she was so fucking feminine and awesome. She was so cool she was sweet and she was just great and i wanted to learn from her i couldn't understand where i was different and she, i was like 20 21 years old where i was different and she was you know she was able to get all the guys um then we ended up hanging up with hanging up with this one guy and i never noticed that i cussed as much as i did back then but it was all about yeah fuck that shit man fuck that man yeah fuck that blah, blah, blah. and she was looking at the guy she was like oh my god i gotta stop like what is going on I didn't even notice that I was doing that. And that's because I was used to speaking like that. I was used to that toxicity foolishness. I was used to negativity. If someone's always speaking negativity, I was used to that. That was cool with me. So it, was, it wasn't until I came around someone who was not doing that and I was like, why are you great? I want to be great. And then when she started to say something, I finally started to feel weird about it. That day, I slowly started to increase my vocabulary. Now, I have reading problems. 
So it takes me a long time to learn words. I pronounce them wrong all the time, so it's not always. But in conjunction with everything else, this will be a problem. If they, if you are at Fogo de Chao, is it Fogo de Chao, Fogo de Chao, I don't know. Um, and they talk about, yeah, I'm a super hawk, blah, 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 blah. Super loud as well. The, the way they control the volume of their voices. Now, as somebody that um, has been tested to be on the spectrum, sometimes we can't control our voices. But obviously, like I said, if this is in conjunction with every other thing, it's just, it's like an icing on the cake that makes it worse. So, um, uh, what was I saying? Damn it. Oh, yeah. We're at like a beautiful restaurant and in a beautiful area. Or we have a beautiful world. We're walking on the beach. It's like sunset. And everything's great. Yeah, fuck this shit, man. Fuck that. Yeah, I beat her as a. And blah, blah, blah. like, no, no, no. And that doesn't mean they'll be bad people, but they will embarrass you in public. Do you want to be embarrassed in public? No, you don't. Because when you're embarrassed in public, then they know that they've embarrassed you in public, which means they know that they can embarrass you, which means they know that they can get under your skin, which means that they have another way to control you. I'm working on my posture, by the way, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, here's one that is just personal. Lots of animals. And like I said, this is in, in combination with everything. I think I said conjunction. I don't know if that was right. Whatever. Uh, uh, I'll Google it. Lots of animals. But no human friends. I knew a girl. As you know, I have doggies and not very good relationships with people. But I have human friends now because I'm a better person. But I used to know a girl that had multiple dogs, multiple animals. Cats, dogs, lizards, spiders, bugs. But she had no human friends. And I wondered why. Because she was really pretty. She was very kind seemingly and great and this and that you can control an animal you train them you feed them you control where they eat what they eat where they sleep everything you can't control a human so very controlling people often will have lots of animals around them because they can control that so a lot of people look at someone with animals and think they're a good person that's not always true and remember it could be true because they care for their animals but this girl was not caring for her animals she just wanted them around her because she wanted something to control uh uh let's see oh the next one how they are with their finances if they cannot control how they spend their money then you're gonna fuck up and spend your money too if they are always asking for a handout or they're always asking for, you know, I'm saving up for a car, but I don't have one and blah, blah, blah. But they've been saving up for a car for five fucking years. Uh, and they're always, they're never giving you gas money think, or they're giving you $5. Or if they always need to hold $5, like where are you going with $5? What can you buy in today's economy with $5? Uh, or they, I don't know. They, they, oh, especially if they're asking you for money all the time, they want you to pay for their hair, their nails, their outfit, their makeup, their everything. You're bad with money, which means you are out of control in some area in your life that, and you should be independent enough to have the things that you need. If you don't, I can't fuck with you because you're not grown and you're not grown minded, which means you'll bring me down to your level. No. And a lot of people think that when they date lower level than them, then they bring that person up. You don't. You bring yourself down. So date at least at your level or higher. Which, does that mean the other person is bringing themselves down? Well, possibly. But that's not your problem, is it? You're bringing yourself up somehow. <laughs> um, people that are overly generous, like big displays of generosity, a lot of times those people are very, very stingy. And they're very, very mean. But they don't know how to show their love with anything but money. So they give you lots of things with their beating ass behind closed doors. And then the last one I wrote down uh, is speaking quickly. I speak quickly. And that's because I have problems. But I'm open about those problems and learning how to better them. People that speak quickly or interrupt you a lot of times don't want you to get a word in. They want to get their point across. They're not trying to listen to you. They don't care about you or what you have to say. They're just, no, 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 no. They're speaking at you, speaking quickly. They don't care if you understand. They just want to get that, get that, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Those people are weak-minded people. Weak-minded people are abusers a lot of the time because why hurt people hurt people? I swear to God, I wish I had a class so we could say it together. Hurt people hurt people. Okay? 
There's your red flags. Here you go. Yeah. That was it. We went over domestic violence. We went over um, red flags. We went over half spot of manipulator. I'll go into online safety another day. Okie dokie. So pay attention to this video. Save it. Bookmark it. Share it. People need to know it.